Okay, let's see now more basics of about the nodes and workflows. In workflows, we have the editor, that is the place that where we have the editor, right? That is the place where we, <coughs> where we have been all the time and we can edit <laughs> the, the workflow. Um, then we have the executions. I'll put this because sometimes I have bad memory and I don't remember what I've talked about and I repeat it. So I'll put it like this to remember that this was mentioned. Then we have the executions. The executions, it's this, this button and here we can see the history of all the executions of this workflow. And this is really useful because when you have the workflow as active and it's uh, operating in the background, okay, um, the, if one of the executions failed, it will be here listed. And we can come to that execution and see which was the error. You see now, for example, here, this is the execution that was done at this, uh, the time that it took uh, in red, if, it's, if it was failed, and we can go to this node. Now we're going to the node of that execution to see what was getting inside the input, to see the details of the error. It's really, really, really helpful like to build the data like this. And if it was uh, successful, then we see like something like this with all the green arrows pointing and uh, what, what came in, what came out and all of that. So it's very really useful to go to the historic of uh, how many times the, the workflow has been executed and go into the detail, right? And um, what else? So executions, right, share a workflow. Okay, imagine that I want workflows, like if you come here and you click share, ah, I need to pay, it doesn't matter, I can share it another way. If I come here and I, in the three dots and I click in download, okay, I don't. I will download this, I put it in the, yeah, here is fine. And look at this, dot .json, dot .json file. It's a .json file. I will put it inside the folder that we were working before. Okay, this is the, J the folder I was now before doing stuff in Visual Studio Code. I'll drag the, oh, it was, it's already opened. Okay, and now workflow 28 underscore april.json. Workflows inside the NHN world are defined as JSON objects. But <laughs> this JSON object is much more complex than the one that we had here. <laughs> this one had only 28 lines, but the JSON object where the workflow, the whole workflow, it's defined. It has 328 lines. Okay, so it's much larger than, uh, and um, here, it's all the information that Node NHN needs to to understand what's going on. And um, what I will do now is this JSON, if you pass it to another person, that person can replicate or to another, um, to another uh, whatever, like uh, NHN program, this, the workflow can be copied. I will show you how. I'll select all the workflow, like all the JSON object. Okay, Control C. And I will come back to NA10 workflows. And I will create a new workflow now. And this one will be copy of 28th of April. Right. And now what I will do is here, right click, no, control B. I did control B and look at this. I have pasted all the, the whole, uh, the whole um, workflow that it was before. What is happening is that you don't see it, but this canvas, it has logics behind. So when you paste the JSON object, you are only seeing this uh, 
visual UI of these squares and all of that. But behind here, you remember the movie of the movie of uh, Matrix when Neo is seeing the code. So it's something like that. Behind the behind here, this JSON uh, uh, when I've pasted the JSON object, the um, it has interpreted all of that all that JSON object, and I am only seeing the these uh, nodes and all of that. Okay, because um, I don't want to get very deep into this because it's not really necessary. But every node, for example, uh, the here the look position. You see, they are specifying the position, the axis x, y, where to place it in the canvas, the ID, uh, like all the relations. Like uh, I'm not going to go deep into this. It's not really necessary, but. Everything is explained here, even the place, the arrows, how do they connect with each other and all of that. So that's how we could copy a workflow from one place to another. So if I want to take this workflow to another place, all that I, the only thing I need to do is to get this file, okay, this file and send it to wherever. If I want to do it in another computer, I send it to the other computer and in the other computer I load NHN and I and uh, I I think if I drag it and drop it also works. Let me test it. I think like this. Okay, Control Z. There is nothing. I'll minimize this. And I think that if I do this, no, like this it doesn't work. If I do this, Control C, Control B. No, it's not working. You need to open it. You need to open it with an edi with an editor and select the uh, select it like this. Okay, Control C, all the object. Okay, go to the end, select it like if it was a document. Control C, and you paste it in the other, and you paste it in the other Control B, and there we have it. Right? Okay, that's how we share. Um, that's how we share a workflow. Nodes, about nodes. Input and output, we already saw it in the video before, so I'll not repeat myself. JSON schema table binaries, we also saw this in the previous video. And parameters. Okay, parameters. I'm here, double clicking one node, and parameters is all of this in the center. Is the what you need to specify and then define for each of the, of the nodes. Every node has different parameters because every node behaves differently okay so i'm not gonna go now very for example binary property what, what to do like um when, when you see more examples you will understand better but basically it's what this node needs to transform the data that received as an input or to start okay right mm. parameters then we have the docs. Every node has docs, and these docs are personalized for this node. They are not generic. Like this is the documentation for this specific node. So you see all the options that you have, like uh, examples, um, and I really well, basically this is what I used to learn basically the first time. Basically going here and understanding more or less. Sometimes in, in most of the notes is not even necessary because they are kind of you just go line by line and it's kind of you understand it directly, you know. But if, in case you didn't understand it, here you go to the docs of that specific um, node. Um, docs, right? Settings, settings of the node. Here in settings, there are some options, like for example, always output data. Um, if I always want to send, there are some nodes that don't, by default, don't, uh, don't pass the data that they received to the other side. So if you want to always output the data that you're receiving, you should leave this on, okay? Execute only once, retry on fail. How many times do you want that this node retries? Could this Happen. Yes, for example, you lost connection for a, for a while and um, you want that this is not stopped. Like you want, okay, I have a really bad connection of internet. This can happen. So I want that this node, in case that is failing, 
thrice, 10 times, and is waiting this amount of milliseconds. So this is only one second between tries. For example, I want you to, to, to try every 20 seconds. So I would write 20,000 milliseconds because you need to, the last three zeros are milliseconds, so 20 seconds. So that's how we should specify it. Or for example, if it fails, I don't want that the workflow stops here. I want that the workflow continues for whatever reason, okay? And then here I can explain whatever I want and uh, I can, for example, say node for drive. And if I want to display node in flow, in the workflow, look at this. Node for drive is what I have just written. And I, that can be helpful if I want to explain to myself because I don't, I don't, you know, you make a workflow and you don't look at it in, man, in weeks or months, you forgot. So you could explain yourself here or the other person uh, give more detail, right? So that the other person, when sees the note, understands, right? So it's some, some way of commenting what is going on. Okay, settings. Access data from another node. Normally, normally, oh, the only thing that you need to do is to work on the data from the previous node. But sometimes you might imagine that this node, for some reason, needs to get data from not the previous node, but the previous previous node, not the father node, the grandfather node. Can we access data from here? Yes. How can we do it? We click here and here in input, if you select the this select, you see that one node back, two nodes back. So I, from here I can access all the all the nodes that are previous to me. For example, Gmail trigger this one. Execute node. I need, I need the one that had some data. I think it was the second. Yeah, I think it was this one. Let's see. No data. Maybe this one. Yeah, this one is the, yeah, this is the one that had data because the not, not the three of them had data, only one had data. So look, now I'm not accessing to the, my one to my parent node. This is my parent node. Now I am accessing accessing my grandfather, my grandparent node like this. And I could get the data from from here. Okay, like drag and drop. I didn't talk about that you can also do drag and drop from the tables like this. Okay? From the JSON and also from the JSON, the properties like this, okay, with the drag and drop. And um, but that's how we do it. Will we see any examples? Yes, yes. There's an example that we need to do something like that to access data from previous nodes. Exactly. And um, that's it. Like uh, the really, really basics of uh, nodes and workflows. Mm, that's all I can think about for now. <laughs>